Hello, in this video, we're going to be looking at integrating the OWS register and login functionality. So uh, in one of the previous videos, what I've done is I've gone through the setup instructions. So basically getting the starter project uh, working locally on your machine. And uh, this will just be like a smooth entry into that project. And we're going to just get started with the register and login functionality. So uh, there already exists some um, plugin widgets that you can use for this. So we're basically going to be um, taking the functionality out of that and putting that into some new design. So uh, it's, it's a lightweight sort of uh, introduction uh, to OWS uh, using this method. So all of the steps can be found on this blog post. So I'll include the, the uh, link in the description. So let's get started. So perhaps I'll uh, show a demonstration of uh, what it will look like. And obviously, don't worry about the design too much, you know. Uh, the idea here is to show you where you can find all the stuff rather than focus on the design. Uh, design it as you wish, you know, find your own designs from uh, the marketplace store or maybe you have a designer, etc. Um, so we'll focus more on the blueprints inside. So this is the login screen and there's also going to be a register screen. So uh, here you can put some data in. Um, let's try um, register a user which already exists. So. Here we go uh, this um, and if click, click uh, accept there's going to be some validation on the server so here you'll get an error saying duplicate uh, account uh, let's uh, try a different one so uh, let's try seven should be fine uh, and then if it's successful it'll just take you back to the login screen so here we'll be able to uh, log in using our email so let's put that in uh, or in fact let's um, try one that doesn't exist. Uh, so you're going to get some validation from the server again. And if it does work, you'll get taken to the next screen for character selection. So um, I've done some of the work uh, for character selection as well. I'll uh, leave a sneak peek uh, for that later. Uh, but for now, let's get started with the login and register functionality. So um, when you download the starter project, uh, you'll have a couple of things um, in here. Uh, what I've actually done is I've migrated some of my work from the previous project, uh, which was for the character selection and creation. So I didn't actually have a login screen uh, before. Um, I've, I've just basically created that. And um, I've done that using uh, one of the assets, actually, which was pretty cool. Um, I'll find it over here. It's this one over here. So um, it's a really nice asset. So I've used this for the designs um, of the widgets and stuff. So it, that's how I managed to get it to look quite nice. Anyway, so I've migrated the work. And if you're not sure how to do that, uh, you can simply right click um, inside your original project. Uh, you can basically uh, select the things you want to migrate, uh, click migrate. Uh, it will automatically find all of the dependencies and then just click OK and select where you want to migrate that to. So uh, that's how you can basically take some content from one project and move it to another one. So this, this is pretty useful. OK, uh, the next thing that we'll look at is um, the uh, plugin assets here. So we, we can find all of the OWS uh, widgets over here. If you don't see this plugins folder, you'll have to basically inside your content browser, click settings and there'll be a button to show the plugin content. So that's how you can detect uh, these uh, widgets over here. So the, the ones that we're going to be focusing on are the login and also for the register. So I'll open those up and um, yeah, we can get started. So um, what I've done is I've created a folder for character creation. And uh, there's two things that we'll need to uh, basically create or modify. And that is your um, heads up display, so a HUD class, and your game mode. So basically, when you open up a map, uh, you're going to be loading a game mode, and the game mode will specify a HUD to, to open. So basically, inside here, uh, you can see that the uh, HUD class is the character create HUD. Uh, that's the main thing I needed to specify. And in your HUD class, you basically create the login widget, okay? And then you add that to the viewport. So that's the, the purpose of these two. And you can specify them inside the world settings. So you can, in fact, just override the HUD here as well. Or you specify the game mode. Um, and that's a little bit better because you can also specify things like character controller, etc. right? 
Okay, cool. So now once you've um, got those created, you'll want to go ahead and start creating your widgets. So again, the, the two folders that we're going to be focusing on is the login and the register. So inside the uh, login folder, we're going to have a login widget. And we're just going to need a couple of fields here. So we, we need two inputs for the username and password. We're going to need some buttons for the login, register and exit. So the exit button was uh, the simplest. So perhaps we'll start with that. Uh, so let's cross reference back to the widget that OWS provides. And here we have the um, exit button, which simply um, calls quit game. So just copy that across. Uh, you'll be able to, um, when you create a button, click on clicked, and you can um, paste the quit game uh, functionality there. Uh, when you click register, you just want to navigate to the register screen. So I've added functions for that just to keep things extra neat. And all you have to do is create the register widget, add that to the viewports, and then remove this one from the parent, right? So relatively straightforward there. Um, so that's the register and the exit button. Now for the login, uh, it's a little bit more complex, but it's not crazy complex, right? So uh, basically what you have here um, is, um, I'm not even sure what this uh, text committed functionality is, but basically it's uh, casting the current uh, owning player to OWS login player controller. Uh, it's going to be showing this uh, loading dialog, which I've skipped. Um, and what you want to do is call this login and create session. So in order to call this, you'll need to have a parent of OWS login widget. So one of the things that you'll want to do then on your widget, click File and Reparent Blueprint, and that's how you can uh, reparent it to OWS Login Widget. So uh, you'll want to do that to get access to things like this one, uh, Login and Create Session. Okay. Um, you will need to uh, also modify your player controller. So again, if we go back to uh, Character Creation, we had the Game Mode, we had the HUD class, You'll also want to create a player controller. So I'm currently using this one. And you'll want to reparent this one to OWS login player controller so that you'll have access to some of the variables in there, such as um, the GUID um, ID. Okay, so let's see. Uh, so once you clicked, uh, or rather, once you've called the login and create session, uh, what that actually does is it's an async function. You're going to call events once that's finished processing. So uh, what happens is that it will uh, call this function back. So um, it can either do event notify login and create session if it's successful, or event uh, error login and create session if it's um, unsuccessful, right? So the error, we're just going to basically get the error message and pop uh, the um, error widget on the screen. So let's have a look at that happening. Um, so there's us calling the login and create session. The inputs are the username and the password, which are these variables here, right? So this is the uh, edit box. Uh, so in order to get the string, you first have to get the text. Uh, so let's show you. Uh, so if you get the um, username, first you want to get text. So that's the, uh, and then it, you, you want to convert that to string, right? So that's how you'll get the um, uh, content out of those edit boxes. Anyway, so once we've called the login and create session, uh, those are the two callbacks that you can expect. You're only going to get one of them. So it's either going to be successful, which is uh, this one, or it's going to be an error. If it's an error, you're going to have uh, this error message uh, part of the event. And what, what we needed to do here was create this error message widget. Now, that's kind of optional. You could have just print string on the screen, uh, but it's a little nicer to have a widget for this. And um, I've created one under common. Um, it's a pretty simple widget. It doesn't have a lot of stuff. Um, Basically, it has a button for OK, um, error content uh, box, and obviously the title for the error. And the way you populate it is, well, first of all, you also specify the parent, uh, just so that you disable the parent when uh, you create the error widget. Uh, but also you just set the text uh, with uh, the error message that you pass in here. So you can see this is a public variable. So when you construct this widget, you just stick that error message into uh, this text box over there. Okay, so that's the error message widget which I've used throughout uh, the different widgets like login, register, uh, create, select character, etc.
Um, okay, cool. So that's how we handle the uh, error on the login. And when you actually log in successfully, uh, again, you get, you're going to get the um, player controller. Uh, from the player controller, you want to set the user session the GUID and uh, go to the character selection screen. So the GUID is going to be used by your other screen. So you just want to populate that as soon as you have uh, the user session going. Um, I've also uh, put a, a error or rather print string onto cast failed. So you just need to make sure that the player controller is of type OWS login player controller. Okay. Um, and that's it for the login widget. So it's uh, relatively straightforward. Um, the login widget over here does contain some stuff that you simply don't need. So we've basically uh, cleaned that up, or at least I, I'm not sure what they are. So um, you don't need them through the vanilla happy path scenario. So uh, that's how we can clean the login widget up. Okay, cool. So the next thing that we're going to do is start looking at the uh, register page. So again, remember, we're going to be calling go to register. When you click the register button, all that does is create a widget of the register class. Um, and that's how you're going to be um, popping that on the screen. Okay, so the register widget is going to have a couple more inputs. Uh, you're going to have first name, last name, email and password. So again, design that as you like. Um, my templates are taken from that um, asset pack that I've shown in the marketplace. Uh, and again, I'm not affiliated with it. It's just a cool asset pack. Um, and uh, again, you've got two options either to go back, accept. I've also got a little button here to go back as well. So they will do the same thing. Uh, in fact, you can see them happening over here. So when you click back or you close, you're going to go back to login. So this does a very similar thing of creating the login widget, adding that to the viewport and then removing this from parent. Um, okay, and uh, the only other option you have is then click the register button. Uh, so here, all we need to do is take all of the fields uh, that you've possessed and you call the register uh, function. In order to get access to that, again, you're going to need to make this parent class of OWS login widget. So again, file, reparent blueprint, select OWS login widget, and you're going to have access to that. Um, the register uh, function will have one of two callbacks. It's either going to be successful, so you're going to get this uh, one back, or uh, you're going to get an error. So again, when you get an error message, uh, we're just going to create the error widget and populate that uh, as an error message. And again, you provide reference to self to disable this widget once the error is on the screen, just so you can't navigate away from it. Uh, you have to acknowledge the error before you do anything else. Okay, so you add that to the viewport. Uh, and yeah, so if it's successful, all you do is go back to login. So let's see, uh, this should be relatively straightforward as well. So um, yeah, so you can see uh, cancel, hide the register widget. Um, you're going to go there. So yeah, it's, it's just um, slightly longer versions of uh, what we're doing. Okay, so that's that's basically it for the login and register. Uh, what we're going to be looking at in the next ones. So again, you, I'll, I'll just show you the error messages. So when you click um, OK and you get an error message, it will disable uh, the widgets in the background. So you, you can see I can't interact with them. So this is what we want. Uh, then if we have, I think I'm on the And then if we have uh, valid credentials, you're going to get to this uh, character selection screen. What we're going to be looking at in the next episode uh, is also character creation. So this is going to be the same character creation that I've used in the past. Um, I've actually broken it down into three parts. And the third part, I was uh, connecting to a custom server. And I'm going to be showing you how it was basically uh, done in a universal way such that we can now connect it to OWS and when you click create, it's actually going to create a character with OWS. And uh, there it is populated on the character selection screen. So we're going to be looking at that in the next episode. And yeah, good luck and see you next time. Bye.